And welcome. This is Artist on Art, yay, for January 30th, 2011. I had the great pleasure of speaking with artist Katarina Lanfranco. Katarina, thank you for coming into the station. Thank you, Nara. And we also have your assistant. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Heidi, mm -hmm. Heidi Kramer, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. Hey, thanks for coming on. Um, I got to tell you, the show is magnificent. Uh, I, I just was completely blown away. I got to see it today. And I saw pictures of your work, Katarina, and they are truly dramatic. And as I believe the curator, one of the curators, Shelby Graham, was saying, um, a photo of your work really tells it all and better than words but we're on radio so we got to do the best we can um but basically you make these installations that is um you create a space with very large cutouts that evoke another space uh a magic art space <laughs> Um, yeah, it's a great way of describing it. Um, for my approach to installation art, I'm looking at the architectural setting to sort of inspire and dictate the form and structure of the piece. And um, having been, you know, having the history of being here at UC Santa Cruz as an undergraduate, I called on a lot of my um, associations and and the actual geography and the landscape to sort of inform the way that the audience or the viewer would enter into the space. So when I was announcing our uh, announcement about the Natural Selection Exhibition, there's the word site-specific, site site-specificity, which is kind of a big art term, but basically it means that you don't really uh, create the actual artwork until you're in the space. Yeah, I'm, I've been fortunate to be invited to Santa Cruz um, at, the, at UC Santa Cruz for a duration of time from the beginning of the quarter. Um, and I've been here, this is my second trip here, but I'm here as, a, as an artisan residence, a low residency artisan residence, but I'm able to actually turn the gallery space into a studio space and make the work there so that it addresses the sort of sight lines and the walls and the the feel that you have when you enter in the space. So it's not something that I could have created in like a studio in New York and brought over for the same effect. Yeah, it's almost like the space lends itself so much to the artwork as much as the artwork, you know, lends itself to the space. It's it's a very fun interaction having you know, the gallery and the studio combined and working in that. It's very fun. That's Heidi Kramer, who has been assisting Katarina Lanfranco with her uh, major work. I mean, this is, it looks like there's been a million cuts made. Yeah, it's <laughs> innumerable. Create. Million innumerable. and one. <laughs> Let me first just explain a little bit about Katarina's background to our dear audience. Uh, Katarina is one of our own UCSC alums. She uh, got her degree in art, uh, but you also studied an independent uh, major. major, which was Vis not... Yeah, it was called Visual Theory and Museum Studies, and it was an independent major that I created combining courses from the Havoc um, Art History Department and cultural anthropology and art theory and even fil film theory um, and just looked at sort of critical um, thinking and sort of art aesthetic philosophy and how you know we engage with visual culture and a lot of different um, points of reference yeah like upcoming after this show is Gamers on Game where a lot of times we talk about how the visual culture of games um, expresses uh, what we've got in our culture. Uh, Katarina lives and works in Brooklyn, even though she's one of our own. She doesn't live here anymore. <laughs> um, and you've got this killer job, it seems to me, where you're teaching workshops at the New York MoMA. Yeah, I um, have just started working in the education department at the MoMA. I also teach at uh, Fordham University and LIM College in New York. But the MoMA um, classes um, are great. I I'm part of the adult education program, and I've taught um, 
drawing collage and upcoming in February I'm teaching some altered bookmaking or altered book art projects and then I'm actually starting this new um, course an online collage course which should be really wild yeah you wonder <laughs> it's it's kind of it's a bit of a um, you know takes you need a sort of mental step in order to envision teaching a studio class over the internet yeah uh, virtual reality for sure and you um, got your degree you also went on to get your master's in fine arts uh, in studio art from Hunter College at CUNY and you um, the picture that I was talking about at the beginning of the show was something that you did at the Nancy Hoffman Gallery in New York City and it's a very dramatic photo you have the White Wall Museum large gallery space and you cut out with black uh, black paper the silhouette form yeah that was that was a show I did in 2009 at the Nancy Hoffman Gallery and it, um, her space is in on 27th Street in uh, the Chelsea Art District of New York and the the piece takes up an entire room and the one wall is 25 feet wide and it goes up over 20 feet and the piece kind of stretches the entire vertice or vertical and horizontal um, lengths of the wall. And so for that piece, I worked in sections and planned it out because I couldn't cut in the gallery. You couldn't cut? They didn't allow it? They didn't have the space, well, the time? Actually, or? I was using a slightly different material that was painted canvas, and so I had to, I had to use a scalpel because it was so... Uh, tough. Tough, and so that wasn't... And it, it just took, it took a long time. Here, what's been great about the artist-in-residency role that I have here and also the, the help of um, the student assistants is that I can really sort of take my time and work in a group effort that piece I did totally on my own and what you're describing is the silhouette form of these invented flora fauna shapes that I created the show was called below a sea of stars and it combined deep sea space with outer space as one liminal frontier geography and then sort of like a fertile ground for imagined plants and animals and then the center of the piece was a sculptural installation of these forms that I made and then the cutouts were this uh, sort of extended landscape, um, silhouetted sort of shadow um, extension of the sculptural elements. You are listening to Katarina Lanfranco talking about her recent exhibition that she did at, at the Nancy Hoffman Gallery. She is here with us now here at UCSC. You can go see her amazing, beautiful work. Uh, the name of it is, is it the cut, Clear Cuts? It's actually Natural Selection. Ah, it is called Natural Selection. And the Cessna Gallery, is, if you're not familiar, it's over at the Porter Gallery. And the reception, the grand opening, fun, 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 free event. Everybody come out. Put this on your calendar right now. This Wednesday, February 1st, from 5 to 7 p.m. And then uh, Katarina will be talking at 6.30 p.m. There are also uh, quite a few related events happening on Thursday, February 2nd, there will be paper cutout demonstrations from 2 to 4 p.m., also at the Cessna Gallery. And then also for the first Friday of February, which is happening this fr Friday, February 3rd, there will be a gallery talk on Ikebana. Ikebana um, by Matsuya Tao. Ikebana is a Japanese traditional floral cutout arrangement. arrangement. And there is an example of that at the Cessna Gallery right now. So when you get to when you come out to see the gallery you'll get the exhibition you'll get to see uh is that Matsuo's Tao's work? Well, actually that piece is my interpretation yes. in collage form and traditional Japanese flower arrangement is with that real flowers and some of the more modern or contemporary versions use paper or found materials to em to sort of highlight or emphasize um ikibana or the the natural elements um like their interpretation of it you know it's it's yeah. really so the ikibana demonstration is going to be with cut flowers and before the demonstration i will be speaking about how my 
studying traditional arts and crafts in Japan in 2010, Ikebana being one of them, influenced my work. And that's uh, Katarina Lanfranco again, and I've got in the studio Heidi Kramer, who has been assisting her in the many cuts that it took to create this wonderful <laughs> exhibition. There's also going to be a bonsai demonstration from 2 to 4 on February 3rd, as a part of the first Friday, by Don White. The regular gallery hours are Tuesday through Saturday, 12 through 5, 12 that is noon to 5 p.m., Wednesdays 12 to 8 p.m., and if you have any questions about any of this, please give a call to 831-459-3606. I just want you to know that sometimes there's parking is kind of a, a hard time here, but this February 1st, for the the main reception, the main event, the party y'all want to come to, there will be... Um, parking help in the in the in the we've reserved the parking the for <laughs> our guests yay for <laughs> porter gallery and again this is open and free to the public please everybody come out um it is so beautiful and i i had the like i said the privilege to get to go and see it in the process of being made the main room which will be a forest a, a yeah, exactly. magical space a forest that has been influenced and in dialogue with our campus, campus, yeah. Campus, Porter in particular, the architecture, the surrounding woods, there's some sequoias, there's there's right. a plum blossoms, right. there's a, a blue jay, you've got not just vegetatives, but you've got birds. A few, yeah. Uh, an eagle, I believe. Yeah, um, I've been, it's, it's a combination of sort of literal aspects of the forest, what you might expect, trees and plants, and then there'll be some um, inset symbols and icons representing both American and Japanese um, trees or nature, uh, kind of a reflection of um, cultural I identities or ideologies. And so they're, they're forced together into this um, unified, through the material surface of the cutout silhouette, unified forest. And so they're in a sort of visual dialogue and a content dialogue with one another and you'll get to see a little bit of this process up on artist on art i'm going to cut a little movie together and show uh katarina as she's doing the work that is drawing and cutting out and heidi y you have had the the pleasure the fun to be mm -hmm. cutting these out also tell yeah. us how that how's that been for you oh it's been wonderfully informative for my work um you know working with the tyvek and uh, you know she's been showing me different techniques of uh you know layering the paper and and ways to to do the cutouts and, and ways to to seam it flawlessly to the where it has a lot of structural integrity which is important uh for such uh, large cutouts you need to make sure that not only are they delicate they have good composition but that they will be able to you know hang up and, and hold their own uh, they they certainly have a lacy uh effect even though mm -hmm. it's a giant lace a yeah. giant forest mm -hmm. lace. They're kind of woven together, the forms. Yeah, they're very, you know, natural, very, very feminine, um, you know, and, and yet they have a, a, a very uh, strong presence because of the grand scale of everything. So, I mean, that's a, a nice reflection of, of my style that I usually find uh, myself leaning towards when I do artwork. So it's been uh, it's been a real pleasure to to incorporate the things that I've been learning and uh, and, and have, have fun exploring the different techniques of not only doing the cutouts but then also doing you know the sewing and, and learning about how she arranges the space to, to create this environment um, that is also informed by the studio itself so it's been great so Heidi Kramer is one of our own UCSC students she you are studying now right yes I'm yes. studying right now and you're getting uh, an art degree with a focus on three-dimensional sculpture yes that's uh, right uh, uh, mixed media mixed media sculpture mm -hmm. yeah yeah which plays plays in great with this idea of, you know, incorporating the fabric and the Tyvek and the cutout paper, um, you know, because I think as an artist, it's it's really important to be able to expand and, and uh, you know, develop in, in all sorts of different materials. Um, so it's been great to, uh, to be a part of that and be in not only a museum setting, 
um, working with Shelby Graham because she's uh, she's been a great help uh, to the installation, but also with Katerina, you know, working with uh, an artist directly has, uh, you know, I get to see both sides of the spectrum. So, um, you know, students, if you want to come out, you know, to the reception, it's it's wonderfully informative and, and it's great to be able to speak with an artist. And Shelby will also be there and, and she's uh, always wonderful to talk to about the Cessnon and, and how she, she works. So um, it's been a big help to me as an undergraduate. She is such a treasure. <laughs> I love Shelby Graham. She's got a great installation right Right now at the Santa Cruz Museum of Art, uh, the Butterfly Effect. That's right. Yeah, which, wonderful uh, work. Yeah. And uh, Heidi and I have met through Heidi's work at the Santa Cruz yeah, Museum of yeah, Art and History. Yeah, yeah, that's right. I'm also uh, an intern at the Museum of Art and History, and I did a, a book bomb installation for the Poetry and Book Arts event, which was a reflection of Shelby Graham's work. She did the uh, the Butterfly Effect, incorporating nuclear bomb blasts and butterflies. Um, so it's it's been ev it's been great having everything kind of tie in together. So Shelby Graham's also a working artist. So. Um, you know, it's it's wonderful that uh, you know I have all these resources available. Um, so I encourage anybody else interested to you know come and have a chat because they're both wonderful people. Oh yeah, uh, Shelby is an educator as well. She um, not only shows you how uh, she not only educates you about the the pieces that are in her installations, but how she curated it, how she went about putting them together. There's also a, amongst this amazing. Um, how many pieces did you do? There's the one main gallery yeah, and so then the there, Ikebana. Yeah, the Ikebana paper collage and then the silhouette cutout installation and then the, there's going to be a um, sculptural installation in the main space. It's just over to the side. And right then now. on top of this amazing collection of Katarina Lanfranco's work, there is also a group show which was co-created by Shelby Graham, Katarina Lanfranco, and uh, Mark Shunny, and it's called Clear Cuts. And um, the reception is the same night, February 1st, and it's all of the same information. And the artist that will be shown in the group selection, group show, is Beatrice Coron, that has several, three pieces, I believe. Two. Two. Beautiful, beautiful, uh, amazing cutouts. Koda Ezawa, Matt Farrar. Felicia Gilman, one of our own um, artists here in town, who does a very long, beautiful, white cutout of a forest that looks like a book, almost. Mm -hmm. And then, um, oh, uh, Lauren Scanlon, Hollis Sigler, Jill Sylvia, and Kara Walker, which I had the pleasure of seeing in another show that uh, Shelby put on I want to say last year, and the Kara Walker book was there, and it is extraordinary. Each one of these pieces is extraordinary. And again, the paper cutout demonstration will happen Thursday, December 2nd, from 2 to 4. Um, lots and lots of amazing things to come out and see and um, experience. That, that's the yeah, thing. Yeah, that's a really important part of installation art, at least for me, is the sort of visceral experience of the materials and the scale and how someone moves through the space and experiences it. So it's not only on, you know, one wall or the three walls when you first walk into the room, but it's on, like it's a 360 panoramic environment. So it sort of envelops you and then you can... You're embodied. Yeah. You're, you're embodied in this, this magical forest space. Right, and you know everything sort of s is woven together, both through the value of it all being the same, you know, black surface, um, but it's also kind of the the elements um, weave together. So you have some trees kind of commingling formally, um, and the trees that were selected are all sort of symbolic trees. Whether it's um, like one of the original Liberty trees or an a bombed or atomic bomb tree from Hiroshima. And that oh. one I found very interesting. The story behind that was really beautiful, you know, with the supports. And I like how we incorporated the supports into the silhouette. So if you guys come in, you know, to the space, keep your eyes open for that for that tree because I thought it was really beautiful. Well, what Heidi is uh, referring to is that um, if you if you ever visit Hiroshima or Nagasaki, um, the trees the the trees that survived the atomic bomb 
are the uh, sort of re remaining living memorials to the atomic bomb, and they're held up by sort of architectural supports and structures so that they can continue to live past sort of their due um, life expectancy. Natural. Yeah, and so they're they're propped up using these posts and plaques are set next to them, and sometimes um, paper cranes are left sort of as remembrance. So I've incorporated that into this forest combined. Caterina Lanfranco talking about her newest work, Natural Selection, here at the Cessnan at Porter College and, and UCSC. Caterina, you were the recipient of the 2010 NEA Japan, Japan U.S. Friendship Commission Creative Arts Fellowship. So you got to go to Japan yeah, and see these a, things. It was a great experience. I went with the intention of researching and studying traditional Japanese arts and crafts, including ikebana and paper cutting and woodblock print and calligraphy, but really focusing on the paper cutting and ikebana and um, looking at them, you know, from this very uh, context-specific technical um, approach that included sort of this whole um, sort of immersion of visual... Um, examples and meeting the the teachers and going to the museums and looking at just such beautiful examples of this work and I had um, naturally gravitated to those kind of forms and so finding them um, in Japan like it wasn't that I saw the work and then decided to make my own studio work reflecting um, those practices it was more like I was on my own train of thought or creative practice and then saw that there was something similar that was ancient in Japan and I was like wow this is amazing let me go and discover and learn more about it and so that's that was an amazing experience I'm really thankful for it and it was really insightful and I and I saw how our connection or our relationship to nature is really a reflection of our cultural paradigm and the ideologies that we have just sort of growing up in whichever context and so I thought it would be nice to use nature as a metaphor for, you know, the sort of cultural perspective and bring things together and sort of share um, views. And that was basically the charge that I was given was to go and be inspired and to sort of, you know, explain to the people that I met what I was doing and then upon returning to the United States, possibly share whatever I learned. So that's what I'm kind of engaged in. Yeah, you know, I think that translates because even just in, you know, working with you, I've learned a lot about, you know, the, the A-bomb trees and the paper cranes and Ikebana and, uh, you know, just experiencing this space, you are encouraged to explore, you know, not only the relationship, but, you know, the symbolism of, uh, you know, the images you've chosen to incorporate into the exhibition. Um, so I, I think, uh, you know, it, it translates very well. I also wanted to just mention really quickly uh, the 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 botany the 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 plants and the animals um, and the trees are uh, very close to natural as far as you um, created them as uh, they link to their original references but there's definitely a departure like I give myself some some room some artistic <laughs> yeah. uh, room for play uh, but you also did another piece um, that isn't going to be formally shown in the gallery space but is on the website and that's a tour that you uh, took <laughs> Shelby oh, yeah. on and then now Shelby is teaching people about the local trees and tell us just a little bit about that we only have a minute but I yeah, think it's really um, great the uh, Steve from Porter, who takes care of the grounds at Porter College, um, gave me a tour of the trees at Porter College, which was great because when I there was there's one um, grove of redwoods that have really informed this piece, and I thought, well, I'd like to know more about the other trees here, and it was so inspiring that I set it up so that everyone at the gallery could take a tour with Steve, and then um, that tour was documented both in. Um, still images and in video and then um everyone sort of was educated on, on the tour and now that's offered to to the public sort yeah of. it was very inspiring steve was uh, you know definitely you can tell he's been here for so long it was a like 20 years and yeah and uh 
And it's really, I mean, that's what the work is about, too, to some yeah. degree, is bringing the outside in and defamiliarizing things that you may sort of see every day but not really see, you know, kind of slow down the perception and viewing process. And so, and kind of make you appreciate um, the world and nature and uh, trees in a different way. Um, I'm staying, actually, at the Merrill Provost House. Um, thank you, Merrill College. And uh, I get to walk through campus to go to work, to go to my studio, which is in the gallery every day. And it's gorgeous. It you is. know, if I'm having some formal troubles about branches or shapes, mm -hmm. I just look, look around. Up. Yeah. yeah. Like, <laughs> okay, up. mental note, that form. <laughs> yeah. It's great. Katarina Lanfranco, thank you so much for coming in. Uh, Heidi Kramer, thank you also. It was a pleasure. The reception, again, is Wednesday, February 1st. Uh, from 5 to 7, and Katarina will be talking at 6.30 in the gallery. The show will be up from February 1st through March 16th, and there's a whole bunch of events that I hope everybody comes out to see uh, at the Cessnon Gallery. February, February 2nd, on Thursday, there will be the paper cutout demonstrations from 2 to 4, and then February 3rd, for the first Friday, from 2 to 4, there will be demonstrations of Ikebana and bonsai. The bonsai demonstration will be done by Don White, and the Ikebana will be done by Matsuya Tao. Thank you so much, Thank both you. of you, for coming yes, out. It's a really, pleasure. I really hope everybody gets to come and yes. see this and, and, beautiful and, gallery. And if I could just say real quickly, on Wednesday nights, 5 to 8, we do uh, coffee um, at uh, at the Cessnon. So, you know, for any of you students that, you know, find it hard, you know, come by Wednesdays later in the evening. We'll have coffee and you'll be able to enjoy this wonderful exhibition before it goes away. Thank you so much. You're very welcome. Uh, Heidi Karen, uh, Kramer and uh, Katarina Lanfranco, please. Stay tuned for Gamers on Game. I got some derpy girls. Ha <laughs> ha! Could it get any hotter in here? I don't know, folks. Keep uh, keep listening though.